Hello everybody and welcome back to You Can't Win. This is Tom here and I'm joined by Don as usual and also by beloved third Mike, Agile Tablet. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Dune, the new movie that came out about a week ago, which kind of feels like we're maybe a little late on the discourse here, but uh, I don't know. I thought it was worth talking about. I really enjoyed it myself. I didn't really know much about Dune. But it turns out, and I only recently discovered this, that Tabs is actually a big Dune head. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to get her take, talk to her about that. And yeah, just see what everyone thought. Yeah. So uh, welcome back, Tabs. Thank you. Yeah. I know I, I haven't been on enough lately, and the people have been clamoring. So everyone loves got to give them what Come they on. want. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we just got to make sure to crank your volume this time. I think it's a quiet. <laughs> Only when I laugh, though. When when I laugh, just make sure it's, you know, uh, yeah. eardrum piercing. Sure. Um, so I guess we should run down quickly what Dune media we've consumed. So, uh, mm. Tom, you said that you'd only seen this movie. You haven't seen the David Lynch one. Yeah, I, I haven't read the books. Uh, you know, I, I don't really know anything about the... I, I just watched the movie, and that's it. So I've seen both of the movies. I haven't seen the Joe Dwarski's Dune or whatever it's called. That documentary. I have not seen that either. Okay. I I do want to, but I have I I also have not. Okay, and so tabs. Uh, you've seen both movies, I assume. I assume, and then. No, actually, oh? I refuse to watch the the Lynch one. I I I'm just never going to watch it. Okay. <laughs> is there it just always it just looked uh not doony to me okay and um and i think you know a lot of people would probably agree with that who have seen it and yeah. just say that you know it like it stands alone it's not really uh like a faithful adaptation or anything like that yeah but i don't really feel the need to see it sure. for that reason so i'm just leaving it alone so where are you on the books I have only read the first three books. Okay. Um, and I I read the I read Dune itself, like many people when I was like a teenager, loved it. I reread it. I think probably how many years ago would that be? Like eight years ago, and it was actually <laughs> it was when I was first getting on Twitter, and I confirmed that because I, I recently picked up the book and I found a piece of paper that I had been using as a bookmark. And on one side of it, I was taking notes about the various factions in, in in Dune, in like the universe and who they were. And on the other side of it, there were like Twitter people on it because I was like keeping track of, I was like, who, who should I follow? You know, these yeah, people yeah. who I used to look at, uh, it was like very, very, very beginning. So um, it was all like, you know, people who I had known on like forums and stuff yeah. being like oh i've got to find them and sure I, you know at sex underscore man <laughs> yeah, yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that <laughs> that was like on the other side of the piece of paper sure. so i was laughing so that's the most recent time i read it so that's not very recent at all um and then after i read that that's when i finally read the second two books which in my opinion are not very good they're okay, but they're nowhere near as good as Dune itself. And so I didn't go on past that because I have the impression that they get even not as gooder. So mm, sure. I, I just, I, I haven't bothered with the, with all the others, like God Emperor of Dune and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah. I, so I don't know as much fan. about that. I'm not a fake fan. I'm just <laughs> limited in my fandom. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, anyway, so let's maybe let's get we'll have to kind of focus on the movie today, I guess, as well. Uh, the recent one, because that's where we're all at, I guess. But uh, yeah. um, wait, so and Don, that's also what people wanted us to talk about, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but we're, yeah. Yeah, we have to kind of, you know, lard it out with some talk of the <laughs> Dune universe and stuff. But yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Uh, anyways, what was that, Tom? Sorry. So you've only seen those the movies, the Lynch and the new one. Yeah, I haven't read the books. Um, OK too slow and uh like i think that like uh the 1984 one is very very strange it's it's just a. I liked it a lot when i saw it because i saw it just a few years ago for the first time and i didn't know anything mm. about it at all and uh, i wasn't really i don't think 
they had probably announced the new Dune, I guess, but like maybe, but like uh, I think it was in development hell for a long time. So, um, yeah. and uh, yeah, I uh, so it was just completely new to me, and I haven't seen much like David Lynch stuff too. So it was just very exciting, and it you know it does drag and stuff, and it's got weird parts, and like it tries to run through a lot of it in the end and stuff, but like. I don't know. It was just neat to see like something like I didn't know anything about that universe before. So it was just neat to mm. see that universe. So anyway, so I think, you know, we're like three different mm-hmm. levels of doing involvement mm-hmm. here. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I do remember I actually I played the game, the old game, the oh, old really? RTS game. Yeah. Like Dune, Dune 2, I think. There's also Dune 2000, which I think is something else. Yes, it is. Uh, that was but, the Command and Conquer one, right? Was like that's a... the one I played. Okay. The one that, that like the the one that was out before Command and Conquer. That, I played that, but I you know that I didn't really connect to the story. I don't even remember if the whole story does it, and universe yeah, does it had... even figure into it really? I don't really remember. I mean, mm. it you definitely have like the worms and the it's on a <laughs> sand planet and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> sure. But I have I have no idea. Yeah. Like it, mm. that was so long ago. Command and Conquer itself sort of plays into that too, but yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I actually I think I did give the Lynch uh, thing a shot, like maybe watched a few minutes of it or something. I like I was I was uh, you know I like David Lynch and there was a period where I was just trying to like watch a bunch of Lynch stuff, and uh, I don't know it just gave me like. It felt like one of those fruity David Bowie '80s movies or something. I was it's just not. It didn't strike like the David Lynch chord for me. So yeah, and I, I had no interest yeah. in it as like a Dune thing or anything. So and he's yeah. he's disavowed it. As yeah, like a, and he was like minimally involved at, at with the final product. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, let's let's talk about the new one. Sure. Um, I which was I, v- yeah. very pleasantly surprised. Very very pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I don't know what you guys think about that director, but I have been very disappointed by everything I've seen by him. Uh, And I want to like, like I was really excited for Arrival and then it was, it didn't really deliver on the linguistics content. (laughs) Sure. Uh, And it was pretty corny and hokey in the end. And I, I've already talked about this, but I hate Sicario Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought the Blade Runner remake was particularly goofy and soulless, and the storyline was embarrassing and didn't really make any sense. Mm-hmm. Although it, it did look cool. Yeah. Um, so that that's that's kind of where I was with with Villeneuve. That was my like level of expectation. I, did and he especially... do Drive? No. Is he the guy behind? No, no, no. no. I, That's I always Winding get Refn. him confused with that that other guy, and so like I I am unable to form an opinion because I get them so mixed up. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're kind of like the same person, but I know they're not. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but I found out. I didn't know this, but I mean, especially with the casting, like the casting is not good for most. Like I don't like Chalamet and. Like, there's no reason to put Momoa in a movie that you want people to take seriously. But despite that, I feel like it succeeded despite that. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I saw the the casting and I saw the trailer, I was like, man, this is going to suck. It's going to be so bad. They're going to do this, like, stupid orangey deadened color on everything that they that they do everywhere. And I was getting all mad, you know, in, in anticipation. Sure. <laughs> and... I didn't realize this, but Villeneuve was a big dune head, as Tom put it, uh, when he was a kid, too. And he first started storyboarding this movie when he was 14 years old. And I feel like his care for the subject matter and his attention to the feel and the details is evident. Like, I think it really comes through, like, that he, he loves Dune. So that was really exciting. I like I like experiencing that. That's cool. Yeah, I really, really liked like I, like the main thing I liked was all of the like pageantry kind of stuff, like a lot of the uh-huh. like a lot of the imperial uniforms and stuff, and like all the different like uh, like all the different ranks and classes and types of people kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I thought that was really cool, and uh, I thought that was done really well in this one. The other one in in the Dune nineteen eighty four one, they they really uh, make it more like sci-fi aliens kind of thing you know like really like mm-hmm. 
uh, it's it's like they're very strange mutants kind of thing, but like superhuman and like really really ro- grotesque. And in this one, it's more kind of like enhanced humans kind of thing a lot of the time. You know, it's not like it's still yeah. within the it's still within it's accessible. It's like really really you can imagine it being plausible to some extent you know what i mean even though it's like yeah. sort of mystical and strange but yeah yeah mm-hmm. i i think i know what you're talking about i i would say that the those are kind of two sides of the same coin like like enhanced versus grotesque like they're they yeah. they are both true and they both have a place in in that universe but i think the um at least from the from just what i've seen of the 1984 one um it, I agree that that it has a lot more of that like garish, yeah. wacky kind of sure. feeling, um, and this, I think he really takes seriously the idea in the universe of like, like very very long stretches of time and what different groups of people uh, aim to accomplish during those stretches of time and like you said like highly specialized people um and like that's a product of that that's like a product of you know humans just like (laughs) having been around for a really long time and specializing themselves and that's the other thing i don't know how obvious this is in uh to to someone who hasn't read the books but in the dune universe um the reason that there aren't like computers and stuff is because artificial intelligence has been outlawed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they at, mention that at some point, do they, I don't know. Maybe you, you told me, but I remember like understanding that that was the case. Okay. Um, I don't think they mentioned it in the movie. I think it's just like a, um, it might've been like implied or an whatever, obvious but... evident, uh, <laughs> absence, obvious absence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the so the the whole thing is about like the like what can what can humans make of themselves like on their own like mm-hmm. without relying on that. So that's where all that hyper specialization comes in with like the mentats and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's Hadarak and all that. Uh, the mentats uh, in this uh, movie seem very very muted compared to the other you know the other <laughs> depictions that i've seen like i think i think in the lynch one they got like a big kind of pulsating brains and stuff like that kind of thing you know? <laughs> oh really oh no and that's got... that's probably the navigators i would guess no the i remember guild navigators i know i know what you mean but but uh i think that the or at least like they have like maybe like spice on their big mouth hair. or something yeah i don't know yeah <laughs> Because um, Brad Dereef is is one of the men- oh, okay. mentats, I think, and I've sure. seen pictures of him as yeah. that. So Fair I just remember big hair. <laughs> sure, but in this one, the guy, his eyes just flip, flip up or whatever, and something. Yeah, like that. he's yeah. just good at math or whatever. Yeah. I, I I didn't even understand that he was like a supernaturally or whatever the word would be here. You know, like I, I didn't. I I just thought it was some sort of like. I, I don't really know what I thought, but it, it just seemed like he. Like was quick with math. <laughs> like, that, that, <laughs> yeah. that was my takeaway. Um, the there was a second mentat too. He was the the one who was with the Harkonnens, the, um, Peter De Vries. Oh, okay. Uh, he's, yeah, but he didn't really do any math or anything like that. <laughs> uh, no, he also didn't leer at Jessica enough. That was that's an important part of the books. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, not important. I'm sure. joking, but yeah, he does do that a lot. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, he had a memorable death. At least he was one of the ones who died when Leto bit down on his tooth. Oh right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. That was a cool scene. Yeah. 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 It did seem like the whole movie was really, really. He really was trying to be like deliberate about trying to make it as accessible to, as possible to people that don't know the backstory kind of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Like every step of it is very, very like, okay, there's this premonition thing you got to care about. There's this thing, there's this thing kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, it's very, very like, I thought that was like good in some ways, but then in other ways I was kind of like, well, I don't know. It made, it made the thing kind of feel like puzzle pieces stuck together kind of thing to me at some level. It was like, like I liked it, but it was also kind of like, I don't know. It just it, it seemed too 
perfect or something like that kind of thing. Like too, I don't know. I, di- I didn't get the same weirdness or soul or something like that from it kind of in that way kind of thing. So, hmm. um, I, I liked well, it, but, uh, yeah, I, it was I definitely just, helpful yeah. for me, I think. Yeah. I, I, I just, uh, there was something about that that I just didn't, it felt like very, very like structured or something like that in a certain way. Yeah. So I, I, I wonder, I, see what you're saying. Yeah. I wonder if part of that is intentional be, and, and I don't mean intentional, like for the audience's sake, but even for the story's sake, because sure. that's kind of like what's going on. There's like an inexorability yeah. of history that's happening. Yeah. And it's like, is Paul going to, um, you know, become part of this or is he going to fight against it sure. or that kind of stuff? So, there's, yeah. I, you know, I wonder if it's like structurally echoed like that too. Sure. I also found it like strange that like, I mean, just, just the, one of the things that a lot of people have pointed to is sort of the fact that like, you know, this is obviously a two or three part movie kind of thing. And you're just seeing mm-hmm. the first part. Mm-hmm. So it does have this sort of thing where it's structured around uh, premonitions of the future that are uh, not necessarily, you know, don't necessarily come true in the way that they, yes. you know, and uh, it has to kind of end, uh, I mean, at a point where at least the characters sort of meet each other or something, you know, and kind of like it's it's at the certain waypoint kind of in the story or something like that. But it's also kind of like you haven't had the resolution of that saga kind of thing in the first yeah. movie so it kind of feels like uh it's like premonitions that don't get fulfilled really i mean all the way kind of thing or something like that like you don't yeah. you don't know what it's in anticipating kind of thing which i think is fine if you're kind of like very okay with that kind of thing but i could also see why a lot of people if they went to see it would be like okay well yes <laughs> well i wanted yeah. like the death star to explode basically kind of yeah thing or something. yeah so I, I feel silly because I, I didn't even, like, consider that. Like, I didn't consider being a normal person seeing this. I was just very, <laughs> very selfishly, like, <laughs> just about my own experience and absorption in it. Yeah, so I thought that was fine, though. I, I uh, It is kind of irritating that, like, now we have to wait years for the next one to come out. But, yeah, yeah I think it, yeah. I think it was, I was I told Tom that uh, the night after we watched it, um, or, no, the 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 day after the night we watched it um i was just kind of you know i was at work working and i kind of had like a barely conscious thought of like oh it's gonna be exciting tonight to watch the next dune (laughs) (laughs) like in my head it was like a tv show and i had just watched the first episode and i was very excited for the next one uh yeah, I I don't know. I, I don't know if just me gushing about how, like, cool I found it is interesting at all, but I really was, like, I haven't experienced that feeling in a really long time of, like, just being very, like, I don't know, it, like, it's a fandom feeling. Sure, yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't know, like, I, I loved a lot of the, um, I, I, by the way, I do think the movie had serious deficits and i would still only give it like a b but Mm -hmm. uh it nailed a lot of the stuff that i find really exciting especially ships Mm -hmm. the ships were really really good yeah i i i love them um so yeah i don't know i was just like like i was automatically anticipating the next you know saga and then realizing oh yeah that's not gonna come for a while sure so what kind of things did you like about the spaceships um, I like their design. I like the sound design. I really like the hydraulics, <laughs> like how they were, like, um, the ornithopters were cool. Um, I don't know what the prefix for dragonfly is. They weren't really bird-like. They were more dragonfly-like, but they looked awesome. I hope we're going to see more of those. I hope we're going to see highliners in the next movies. What What are highliners? These are like the bigger, like, this so in in this universe the spacing guild has like complete control over all space travel they're the ones they have like a monopoly on that and they control it so it's not something that just anyone can do so it's like another one of the 
you know, puzzle pieces in sure. like this power structure. You know, it's not like the just because the emperor is the emperor, it doesn't mean he can just go wherever he wants, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we saw some of the larger ships and I, I hope we see some, some more of that in the next, in the next one. Um, but yeah, I, I just really liked the design. They just like seemed cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the scale of it was cool. Like th that, that yeah. kind of is throughout the movie, like with the architecture and the worm and like all, all that kind of stuff. Like, uh, he did a great job of like just presenting this like massive scale of things. And I think that really plays into the scale of the timeline of the whole story. Like mm -hmm. it's 10,000 or I guess it would be 8,000 years in the future. And uh, that's just kind of crazy to think about like two, what 2000 years ago was like, and then multiply that by four. That's how far out in the future we're projecting and stuff. Uh, yeah. So uh, that was, that was cool. Uh, I, th I thought the movie did a really, the thing I really enjoyed the most out of it, it was just that uh, this the sense of like a, a very dense and heavy like uh, just years and years of like these weird traditions that have gotten more mm -hmm. and more bizarre from our perspective, you know, and um, you know it kind of ties into the stuff about like the different classes and hierarchies and pageantry and stuff you were talking about, Don. But just like everything was like that, I thought it was really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does feel like a like a, a lived in universe. Like it feels like almost collapsing under its own weight. It's like it's like weary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like really ancient in a mm -hmm. in some kind of way. Yeah, and that that seems like difficult to me. Like if so if 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 that were my task as a director, I feel like <laughs> I feel like that would that's a difficult thing to 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 express in in a movie without mm -hmm. trying to without just being like very silly and heavy-handed about it like we are very old our organization is so old like i don't know how yeah. i would but he did that like with a feel so i thought that was cool yeah well everything was like uh felt bizarre you know yeah like I mean, there's there's this thing now. It's become like a meme. The whole uh, I don't even know what was going on. Maybe you guys can explain this. But the thing with the throat singing and it's in the rain and there's like sacrifices or something going on. It was some kind yeah, of the, weird, the like blood ritual with the Sardo car. Right. I, I I don't really. What was that? First of all, they were uh, the Sardo car are um, imperial troops. So the conversation that was happening in that scene was, so that, that was like a blood ritual of like inducting the new class <laughs> kind of, of these, uh, of these troops, but they're like the most elite troops in, in this universe. And the conversation that you saw happening was when the emperor committed to betraying the Atreides and um, aligning himself uh, more obviously with uh, Harkonnens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, what were the, were they sacrificing people or something? Um, what was going yeah, on with, I, with that? I I actually don't remember. I I think they were. Um, there were like people I, that were like upside down, kind yes, of, and there was and like pools blood was, of blood and stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, and they were all getting like anointed with the blood. I don't. I I honestly don't remember that from the book, so I I hesitate to comment on it. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's. I think it's just supposed to indicate, like, that you know, it's like they're, they're serious troops. <laughs> like yeah, they're, yeah. Like yeah. they're 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 particularly brutal and stuff like that. But um, of course, the I, I I don't. I'm sorry if I like mispronounce things. These are things that I've had in my head for many years, and they say them differently in the movie. So I don't know what's right or wrong. But I, in my head, it was always Freeman. It was not Fremen. Um. But anyway, the the um, the Freeman slash Fremen are like the only people who have shown any sort of ability to resist the Sardaukar. Mm -hmm. Right. Because of the harsh environment and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and also perhaps because of some other things. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Well, uh yeah. I, anyway, that 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 whole thing of just like the how heavy everything felt in terms of like like the history of that universe felt very heavy. Uh, mm -hmm. That sure. 
that was what really like caught my attention. I was like, oh, this is cool. This is different from like it wasn't like some Star Wars, Star Trek kind of thing to me. It felt I was laughing that you when we paused it the first time, you're like, man, this isn't like some Star Wars, Star Trek. Like, I just thought it was funny that that's what you were expecting. Like, I mean, I understand why. It's just like another one of these like sci fi classics from the 70s. So, like, I can't blame you for that. But of course, in my mind, I was like, no, Dune is more dignified than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was cool. I liked that they didn't try to uh, explain so much. It was just like, I mean, it, there was a little bit, obviously, to kind of help you along, but there was also just a lot of like weird stuff that was just like, wow, this this that's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. I don't know what the heck that was. <laughs> I, I always kind of enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> cool um but yeah I, um you, you know you were mentioning the casting earlier tabs i yeah. i kind of agree some very bad casting um uh momoa was kind of the the worst um i didn't and that's think that's not even like his fault really he's just miscast <laughs> i mean it's kind of his fault but yeah it's also <laughs> just like they should have gone with someone more serious like the rock or something i don't know like exactly. almost anybody could have uh he just felt completely out of place like it uh it was weird um the paul guy the timothy guy it was he was fine i thought he did the job yeah well he wasn't enough terrible. i guess he he also surprised me i i just don't <laughs> this is not nice of me but i just don't like looking at him mm -hmm. um but uh the two things that i've seen him in recently he surprised me both times by being not nearly as terrible as i thought he was going to be so that was this and um, that King movie. Yeah, yeah that with the which, Shakespeare thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. good. Yeah, he he, uh, yeah he was not terrible in that either. Um, so yeah, I, I thought um, Lady Jessica was well cast. I don't agree with how she was directed to act a lot of the time, but I thought she was well cast. Um, it just kind of annoyed me that she was like crying for like over half of her scenes. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, that I, I don't think she appeared like a, a weak character. So I'm not like, Oh, I'm, this is misogynistic to make her weak or something like that. Um, but that's just not my impression of the character. Like from having read the books, like she is, she's part of the scheming of the Bene Gesserit. Like, I don't think that that's like, something outside of her of course she's like a mother too um and it's not like she's inhuman but she's like very smart very talented and very ambitious and um i i don't know i just feel like seeing her like crying all the time is not really in keeping with that character sure i don't know sure i, I can understand that it sort of felt like she was being over like she was overwhelmed with what was happening and like wanted off the ride sort of a thing um but my impression of what she was like in the books like from you uh, um you know is that she was maybe maybe like it, it was a rough time going through that that kind of stuff but she was like you know invested she she i mean she's committed. she's the one like they even mentioned it in like in the um exposition with the um with the mother superior um where you know they say like we told you to have a daughter and you yeah. had a son instead because like basically because of your ego because you thought you could bring this person about who we've been trying to create for centuries mm -hmm. so yeah she is she's in it to win it you know <laughs> yeah yeah uh the i feel like it 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 did succeed in spite of itself i i do think the the fighting was pretty terrible mm -hmm. um it looked very um Power like a Rangers. like a like, <laughs> yes it looked like a dance routine yeah. like it didn't look like actual ferocious fighting at all um and it looked like kind of corny like like um what's the Oh, I can't remember that. I, I'm embarrassing myself again. But what's the name of the in um, like Chinese martial arts movies? The wire, um, all the people on wires. There's like a name for like this. Wuxia. Uh, yeah, 
that it like it didn't even have the benefit of like looking like that like 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 that looks artificial but it looks cool and it kind of has its own rules I, I i don't think this succeeded like that i think it just looked pretty corny and power rangery mm-hmm. um so that was another thing i didn't really like that much about it but i mean if that's my only complaint that's you know that's pretty good it mm-hmm. wasn't terrible how did you like uh, zendaya Oh, uh, I don't know why they didn't tell her how to say Mahdi. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't really know who she is. I just know that she's like a celebrity. Yeah. Um, so she didn't really have that much. She seemed to be focusing very hard on being like making a tough face and not being pretty for once. <laughs> sure. So that's my only impression. We'll see how she is as Chani later. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, what about you? Did you have uh, an impression of her performance? I, see, I don't know. I I never really have a good track on like acting kind of stuff. Like I just like everyone's acting. It doesn't matter. Like <laughs> I watch a lot of those like, uh, you know, like there's that best of the worst and stuff like the red letter media stuff. I watch a lot of those mm. and they'll have like a lot of like acting and I can kind of tell then that it's like bad acting kind of thing because it's it's just like (laughs) really but I I always think to myself like I would be that bad or something that's what it's (laughs) yeah it's not like it's not like a big gotcha or something to me so I don't really get like I don't know like I I can still you know if if acting is like off the charts good like I was watching like Casino the other day or something like that and there's a lot of great acting in that kind of thing but like uh, it then then I kind of go okay that's great acting or something but i don't know i i have a very uh i don't know uh i i, I just like everyone in movies i, I really enjoy <laughs> like just the experience and everything about it so i'm just like smiling the whole time no matter what it is usually so so is that how you felt about this yeah i mean so there was parts of it that felt like it, it sort of dragged for me sometimes and like yeah it, i agree it, it it was like uh I didn't care as much as the when I saw the 1984 one, like the first time kind of thing. Although even by the end of that one, I was kind of like checked out a bit. But like this one was, mm-hmm. uh, so it was fine. But like uh, um, the stuff that made it good to me, like was well worth the rest of it kind of thing to me. Yes, like, you know, so. definitely. Yeah. 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 Like all the world building kind of stuff is really exciting mm-hmm. and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for, uh, they kind of teased about worm riding at the very end, so that's going to be fun to see. Sure. Um, and I think, like, the ships, I said, like, we're going to see some of that, too, so I'm, I'm excited for what comes next. Yeah. I agree about it dragging sometimes. I feel like the first half of it had a pretty good uh, energy, and then um, the momentum started dropping a little bit, um, and it kind of felt like it meandered somewhat. But uh, I got to assume that part of that is just because of the aforementioned issue of it being like half, like a third or half of the book Mm -hmm. and getting cut off there. So we'll just have to see, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I I didn't mind that, to be honest, the pace of it, but I kind of like sort of like slow plotting things. I don't think it was slow. I think it just lost focus. Mm. That's all. Mm hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe because I was sort of just like absorbing all of this. Uh, mm. it, it was just like a universe, like this new kind yeah. of crazy thing that that I didn't mind. That it was just sort of like a aimless tour through the world. Mm-hmm. You know, that kind mm-hmm. of was fine to me. Hmm. Um. I I like this this sort of futuristic, super super futuristic stuff, like in the far future. I kind of like that because. Like, a lot of the stuff I think about is, like, just different socialist kind of stuff. And a lot of when times when people imagine the future for socialism, it's kind of like a fairy tale kind of thing where it's like, okay, well, we'll we'll basically solve all the big political problems and then that will be that kind of thing, right? You know, it's always mm-hmm. like, it's always like, well, yeah, we'll just, like, make it so everyone has health care and uh, education and whatever, you know, like, just stuff like that. And then there might be, like, some thing about that of like well and then we'll have a bunch of space colonies or something like that kind of thing you know there's there's some <laughs> addition there of like and then we'll multiply and then you know get, get go across the universe and stuff like that that's like all probably, the old ideas that's probably like as far as it gets kind of thing and then uh um and then 
uh, you know, Orwell had this line once where he said something. I, I can't remember the exact thing, but it was like uh, that sometimes socialists, when you talk to them about socialism, uh, it sounds like it's a person that uh, has a toothache imagining that socialism will mean that the toothache is gone or something like that kind of thing. Like that okay. all you're imagining is that there's problems and then you go, oh, okay, well, now the problems will be gone. But there's no like actual like what should humanity be doing or like what factions yeah. will kind of emerge differently or something like that. Like what will happen if like in this universe there was still – obviously like it looked like inequality in different ways or like at least class and stuff but like uh um it wasn't you know like i i think that like that's something that's important to think about is like okay well what comes next after equality or something like that kind of thing even you know like is it yes is it is it like do people like does it end up turning into a bunch of like religious wars or something like that or does it turn into uh you know, as as this uh, universe sort of ends up, I guess, uh, pointing towards is like, do we start to develop technologies that we then uh, feel like we have to fight against kind of thing, like uh, artificial intelligence or something, or like, uh, you know, stuff like that, like just all the different things. And I, I think it is, it's so impossible to do that it's like, uh, at some level that it's like, okay, well, you're just fantasizing about like some strange future or something like that, but I think that's kind of exciting to think like, okay, well, you know, a lot of like the stuff that people talk about with socialism is so easy to fi- figure out that it's like, okay, well, <laughs> you know, the idea of everyone having healthcare is not that hard to think through or something like that kind of thing. Or like, even like at the edge of it, a lot of the time it'll be like, okay, we'll all live in like communities that serve our needs and stuff like that. And we can produce as we like or something like that. But it's always like, yeah, but produce what? What do we want to do? What do we want to what's the future you know what's beyond yeah, this sometimes so. sometimes the like if if you're only focused on removing the negative then it it's there's less imagination devoted to uh to that creative energy yeah um, and uh yeah i think that like you know for someone like uh, nietzsche that was like his whole like being like that almost like a nihilistic towards it or something like that is that like you know the last man and stuff it's like okay we're just gonna move towards this kind of bland future if 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 we follow that path it would just be a bland future something i don't know i i I don't think that's true but it's like it's hard to kind of argue against it but but you're right (laughs) well yeah it is hard to argue against something that is in the future not falsifiable and (laughs) (laughs) all that kind of stuff (laughs) but yeah i take your point uh because you know you do need that imagination just you know, not not necessarily. You don't have to be realistic about it, but it ha- there has to be some sort of thought in that direction sure. by someone. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so that's why we should create some sort of space empire in the future. That I guess. Yeah. I yeah. thought you would never say it. Yeah. Gosh, thank God. <laughs> um, okay. So, I don't know. Was there anything else that you guys wanted to bring up about this movie? Or um, we could discuss the sort of like Islamic pseudo-islamic aspect of the whole thing i guess might be worth talking about what do you have to what what yeah how how was that to you like what was that like as a muslim uh d- it didn't really make a big impression like either way uh yeah it, it just sort of seemed like it, it really didn't feel like islam at all and so mm-hmm. the fact that they used like certain terms like um like Mahdi and stuff uh, was, I don't know. It's it sort of like, it's easy to, to uh, figure out, like to kind of think that through in a way that like makes sense in the universe. You know, it's 8,000 years in the future. Exactly. Uh, it's not going to have the same feel. Yeah. It doesn't it, just because they are like using certain words and stuff. Like it right. doesn't mean that those people would have any idea of the, origins of that or have any connection to the origins of these words or these concepts or anything and have like Like, a completely different take like that that seemed fine i had no problem with it in 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 contemporary english like the words that we get from latin yeah uh, via romance languages it's Mm -hmm. not like we have any connection to the culture of ancient rome or something like that it's changed since then so yeah it's more more like i don't know just like little 
pieces and whispers and then like certain things have become bigger certain things have become smaller um i i like that uh that herbert was very you know he, he knew what he was talking about he wasn't just like doing some just taking like a few orientalist tropes and then trying to make a whole universe out of it i i like that he didn't really that he didn't really stick with it, you know, <laughs> like, like he, he wasn't trying to just like transpose current living Islam into that universe. He was just like taking bits and pieces. And he did that from everything. Like the Atreides are like, are like Greco-Roman style. Bene Gesserit takes a lot of, um, uses a lot of like Hebrew vocabulary and stuff like that. Like he's just taking stuff from like lots of ancient feeling cultures, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and and he wasn't like particularly i don't know it's my impression that he wasn't particularly like dogmatically tied to any of them so i i i like that I, that that feels kind of cool helps with the lived in thing you know yeah i like that the harkonnen that's like a that's a finnish name basically yeah i mean i've never seen someone with that particular last name but that like is the way that finnish names are <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the, I always the wondered about that. I was like, they don't seem particularly Finnish, and why would you choose Finnish? I I don't have. It probably just sounded one. like aggressive, like or something. <laughs> you know, just sort of fit the. Not if you heard a Finn saying it. Harkonen. Harkonen. Seppo Harkonen. Yeah. Mitä kuuluu? What's that? It's just like what's up. Oh okay. Um, yeah, what is the Orange Catholic Bible? Oh, know. gosh. What? The Orange Cat? Oh, right, the thing they keep referencing is, like, the this text, like, right? I don't remember. Oh, man. Damn. I don't know. I have to look that up. I, I don't remember. It's tickling the edges of my memory, but I, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I, I've started know, listening yeah. to the audiobook, and um, they kind of like quote from it or like refer to this sort of thing yeah. and it seems like it's some kind of like codex or like a compilation sure. of scripture and <laughs> okay here we go it's got marcus Aurelius, the orange, I think. the orange catholic bible also known as the Korangiana zen christian scriptures um the accumulated book or the zen christian nava Quran, was one of the most important religious texts in the known universe. It was supposed to be a fusion of all significant religious thought in human history with a strong emphasis on religious beliefs originating on Earth. Um, these included the Maumethsari, Mahayana Christianity, Zen Sunni Catholicism, and Buddh Islamic traditions. <laughs> uh, it was produced by the Commission of Ecumenical Translators in the wake of the Butlerian Jihad. Which is the struggle that resulted in the um, outlawing of artificial intelligence? Okay, cool. So that sorry, that was from the Dune Wiki, Dune.fandom.com, except for me talking about the but Butlerian Jihad. That was just me talking about that it. term, Butlerian Jihad. It always makes me think of like the current sort of like social justice gender yeah. war stuff. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, Judith, Judith Butler. Butler. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I was like, where are they going with this? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's funny. But yeah, that's the Orange Catholic Bible. I'm sorry I forgot that. Oh, well, that's good. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, yeah, it's funny. It sounds, I, I, that's another one of those things. I, I, there are very obviously like uh, dichotomies and stuff being set up. That It's funny, like Orange Catholic, uh, you know, Orange, obviously Protestant color. Is that like William of Orange? Yeah, kind of like thing? a... Okay. Like there's uh, orange lodges and stuff like that that are like mm. Protestant houses or like of uh, they're like uh, what do you call it? I don't know. I don't know what to, to call them. Like clubs or something like that for uh, certain types of Protestants. That yeah, um, like the Orangeman parades and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. So yeah. never heard of it. Yeah, they, it's it's, it's big like with in, the like, tiki torches like... in Charlottesville, the Orange Man parade. No. Uh, pretty much, actually, yeah. Like a lot of anti-Catholic <laughs> stuff is. So. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So it's sort of like, it, I mean, it 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 ranges from pretty standard Protestant stuff. Like 
and that's why uh, the Dutch are really big into orange and stuff and stuff like that. So they had a colony um, in Africa called like Orange. Oh yeah. Maybe not. Maybe yeah. not the Dutch. Maybe it was a uh, Boers or something. But sure. I think that was uh, one of those. Well, that's that's the same thing. I mean. Oh, they of... were Dutch, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there you go. With a J, O O R A A N G, yeah. or something like that. It's just the that's just the English cognate of the same word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's that's big in like uh, like the yeah the orange and parade like like the like in Northern Ireland and stuff where mm. they, they they would parade through Gothic neighborhoods and the police would protect them and stuff and it, yeah that's where a lot of the fighting would come from so yeah. Mm. Yep. So there's an orange lodge in my town, actually. But yeah. Is I there really? It. Yeah, I see it sometimes. It's it's sort of run down, but yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I the only other thing that I was reminded of that I wanted to mention was, um, I was, my, I I talked to my mom about Dune recently, <laughs> and uh, she liked it. She watched the movie too, and she she read the book, but like in the. 60s or 70s or whenever she read it so uh it had been quite a while um but she liked it a lot and we were talking about it and she said something about paul and i can't remember what it was but i was kind of commenting that he he's not really like a a character in the same way that a lot of like he's not very flat like his personality and like here's what motivates him and here's he's so identifiable like there's nothing like that present in him and nor should there be i think it's fine um but i was i was just trying to say that he's not really like fleshed out like like a lot of characters are in like contemporary like fiction like in novels and stuff like that mm-hmm. and i said that he was more of like he he's more of like a role like he's like the way i phrased it the other day was like he's like a He's like a vessel for history mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. rather than like a like a guy, you know. Sure. <laughs> and when I said that, my mom was like, well, I mean, they, they still have to have an actor playing him, right? Like, I don't know sure. how they would do that. Yeah. Just like not a person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I, that's not what I meant. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just thought it was cute that she sure. was like, hmm, how would they portray a concept <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no 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 mom <laughs> sure. anyway i just thought that was cute mm-hmm. doesn't doesn't he eventually become some sort of worm man or something or is that someone else <laughs> yeah that is doom uh, to the is... worm man i think is the <laughs> working title no 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 there is a very funny worm man present i i no spoilers no spoilers okay okay there's a lot of a lot of strange things that happen okay <laughs> the, the the worm stuff is my least favorite part of it so far really it, it does nothing cool. for me like i i don't really care about it. It, it i feel like it could be just f- as fine without it like it, it doesn't well, seem really yeah. it's you're gonna learn about like what spice is and like that's that's part of why the worms are cool like they're cool as creatures too um but but part of it is like, what what is spice? Why is it only something that happens on this one planet for the entire galaxy or whatever? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's warm. Poop. How is it made? What is it actually used? Like, what is it meant for? Rather than what has it been used for? Like, why is it wanted by um, the space and guild, the emperor, and all this kind of stuff? Yeah, you know what? To be honest, the spice angle also is, is similarly like not as interesting to me. Like all that. Se- they just haven't gone into it that much. I, I get that. I, I'm just like, sort of giving my impression based on just like the first movie. Like I, I'm open to them like kind of exploring this and m- making more of it in the next movie and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Like the whole rest of the universe is just interesting enough without all mm-hmm. that kind of like need for like this pressing narrative of like Paul and the worms and the spice and all that. Like, I don't know, whatever the, all the, the crazy stuff that's happening is interesting enough for me. <laughs> yeah. But the spice is the reason why all of that's happening. Sure. Well, anyway, I'm looking forward to the second one for sure. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it'll be fun. I don't know. Um, You'll like the acting, so it's okay. <laughs> sure. 
Are there any like uh, interesting characters that we're waiting to see? Like, are there people that are coming up in the next movie that you like, like that were in the book that you're like, oh, can't wait to see that? I mean, you don't have to like spoil it, but have- yeah, there's. I mean, most of the main characters are around at this point, mm-hmm. and um, will or at least have been made mention of. Like, I don't think we've seen the emperor. I don't um, think so. And there have been some hints toward uh, someone else who is uh, pretty important, who's who's going to be coming up soon. Yeah, there's there's yeah there's one there's one more like big character who's who's not around yet. So that'll be cool. And then there's also stuff that happens to some of the characters that sort of makes them new characters. So we'll have to see. Sure. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to go into it more than that. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. While we were talking, I ordered the first book. So. Uh, oh, I'll, nice. I'm gonna, okay. I'm going to. I, I think in. Tom should read it too. Yeah. Okay. The audio book is kind of not doing it for me. I'm sort of, um, kind of like half paying I told attention you, to bro. I told you, bro. <laughs> don't listen to the audiobook. Yeah, but you are kind of like just a blanket ban on audiobook. And like... No, I like one audiobook. Okay. You like one. <laughs> yeah, you have one audiobook friend. That doesn't make you <laughs> non bigoted here. Sure. I, I, I like audiobooks. <laughs> I've, I've listened to some that I actually like quite enjoyed a lot, like uh, even more so than actually reading it. And so, I, you know. It was Harry Potter. He loved Harry Potter the, loved the, it. The person who did it did all the voices. Oh, he he was just in heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but the the Dune one is just not that great. The, they have Paul, and it it's really funny because it sounds like Kyle MacLachlan doing like his kind of doofy like oh, it has almost like a kid kind of a voice like Ugh. oh blah, 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 blah. I, I don't know it's it's. <laughs> It's very different from the movie version, so just like, what is this? Sure. Well, yeah. It's just the one uh, on YouTube. Uh, if you guys are interested, you can just find it on YouTube. Hmm. Sounds great. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we're all giving this a thumbs up. It seems like we all like the movie. Yep. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Cool. Um, All right. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> and that's that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Um, was there was was this supposed to be just the Dune episode, or were there other media topics that people wanted us to cover at the same time? I don't think anyone brought anything up specifically. Yeah, okay, I'm not gotcha. sure. Have you seen anything else lately? I've I've just been reading my my fantasy books more and wanting to I keep thinking about them during my work day. <laughs> it's like all I want to do is like get off of work and be immersed in my little high fantasy world. But no, I have not watched anything recently. Mm-hmm. Have you continued going to the movie theaters, Donald? Um other than this not really. I mean, uh well actually let me make a quick look. Oh, did you, you see this in the theater? Yeah, I did. Man, that's oh. that's the way to do it, I bet. Yeah, although I might have to see it again. I missed I missed parts of it because I always get up to go to the washroom out all the time and stuff mm. like that. Uh, like a bunch of times during the movie kind of thing I have to. So, uh I uh, I missed parts of it. I didn't I don't think I saw that Sardu car or whatever part with the sacrifice oh, really? and all that kind of stuff. I don't think oh, I saw Oh, really? That. It's the thing I I sent you the the YouTube thing. Yeah, yeah. I didn't click that yet, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Someone uh, turned yeah, it into a rave scene and put like a beat behind it and like. Yep, there's a lot of hilarious memes from yep, that scene. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. I'm laughing just thinking about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll have to. We'll all watch it again and talk about it again. <laughs> I kind of want to watch it again. I I, mm-hmm. I, can... I I totally would. I totally would. All right. Well, I I don't know. Maybe we can. Let the uh, audience in on this that Don may be visiting us, yeah, in about a month from now. So yeah, maybe we'll do a, a Dune watching party. Yeah, we could do something like that. Yeah. I didn't want to say. I felt like that was Donald's to bring up. If what? Wanted to. <laughs> no, 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 no. And we might try to do. 
I mean, we haven't even, I haven't brought this up yet, but we maybe we'll record an episode. Oh. Yeah, for sure. We'll see. We'll see if that goes any differently. Yeah. <laughs> Just so, being in the same room. It'll be like one of those uh, podcasts that they that people record in actual studios and then put on YouTube. It'll be like a round table. Everyone wearing their cans at the table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys will look awesome. I should bring my microphone. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. So. I'll set up the living room <laughs> to look just like Joe Rogan's studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get some black rifle <laughs> coffee and everything. Yikes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right. Well, uh, shall we do some questions? Wrap this sure. up? Yep. Uh, so this question is right on topic. So this seems like the right one to start with. It says, just watch the new June. Does that give me a good idea of what Islam is about? Seems like Muslims are basically the sand people or whatever. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, one thing I didn't mention here is that it felt really good to be represented on screen. You know, (laughs) people kind of talk about that and to see like this white Muslim guy and the Harkonnens, you know, the Finnish (laughs) folks, like it it just felt good to see my culture and my people on screen. So (laughs) that was nice. But yeah, pretty much exactly, exactly what Islam is about, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Good times. Yeah. So. It it would be funny if that religion somehow came true, like if mm-hmm. that were the real one, kind of thing. You like die and get to. What have... do you mean? You're gonna say that Islam is not the real religion? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, that you, yeah, you die and then you you get to heaven or something, and they're like, oh yeah, and then they're like the Harkonnen were there and stuff. And it's like, <laughs> this book is actually like a sacred text now and stuff, and yeah. <laughs> He just knew somehow the orange Catholic Bible was real and stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? You never know. I mean, that is stupid enough that it would be perfect <laughs> for our world kind of thing. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It sort of does fit into my kind of like new philosophy of whatever is the stupidest is the most true kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. Or it's like it's that's what's going to happen. Sure. So, yeah, could be. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Um, so the next question is, people might say this is cope, but what I really miss is having someone I feel ment- mentally connected to, not just a girlfriend. Having a girlfriend is mostly like having a pet. Lots of added responsibilities. Hmm. What yeah. was that in the context of? That's just I, I don't a know. strange comment. Yeah, I think someone <laughs> confused our curious cat for their like... <laughs> texting their therapist or something. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not uh, even a question. It's, no, it's not. Well, I think, yeah, number one thing, don't compare women to animals to them. Like, don't, you know, don't say they're like pets, you know, like animals. Don't say that to them, you know. You can you can say it around guys, obviously. But, like, I don't know. That's a probably a, that's a faux pas right now, so. With all that's that makes... going on in the world, so <laughs> <laughs> he said conspiratorially. Yeah, um, that makes me feel pretty bad for the person who said that. That mm-hmm. like, I don't know. So sometimes people tell on themselves that they don't really know how to relate deeply to people, or yeah. like have have successful relationships. That just kind of makes me sad if someone. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't judge. There's a, there's a lot of people who seem perfectly happy in relationships like that, where they really don't actually like seem to connect very deeply at all with their partner, mm-hmm. but they seem fine with it. So maybe I'm just being biased towards sure. my own preferences there, but it kind of makes me sad. It's hard for me to judge based on like what's said online and stuff like that, just because uh, it's all like symbols and codes and stuff that i don't understand kind of thing a lot of it like it's just like it's people because people will like say why they don't want to date someone or something like that and it'll be like uh he got me the wrong type type of rose or something like that kind of thing and i'll be like what the hell is they talking about or something so yeah that stuff's (laughs) completely alien to me the the reasons that people break up and stuff like what how is that even a factor in the equation like yeah and, I mean, I think that yeah. that just shows the that the reasons that people get together are also as stupid and capricious, you know? Mm-hmm. It's it's a very strange thing where it's like, 
it's it's uh it's one it's like a part of it substituting for something else kind of thing you know it's like it's like uh it's almost like some sort of sociological code or something like yeah some oh, kind of signifier yeah it's like yeah. oh he's one of those types of guys who and yes. then it's like you know and then you kind of it's it's it I guess it's like I understand that at some level it's like almost like a defensive or like time saving thing, where it's like oh he's one of those guys. It's like when they people people talk about like what's on your shelf or something like that kind of stuff. It's yeah. like oh he's a David Foster Wallace guy or something like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. I get that that it's like, you know, it's saying oh I don't want to be associated with that kind of person or something. I get that, but like uh, I have no idea. I was listening to this thing today. Uh, someone was showing like some thread or something like that about like rings and stuff and uh, it was talking about like engagement rings type thing yeah like uh wedding rings and it was talking about you know i was just talking about like the whole thing about how women are sometimes sometimes told to wear wedding rings at conferences even if they're single because it like prevents sometimes guys from like hitting on you and stuff because it's like Mm -hmm. oh i shouldn't do that because they're married or whatever Mm -hmm. i don't think i've ever noticed if a woman has a ring on or not. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't think I've ever, it's never come up You're just lines. too pure a Chad. You go for it <laughs> on your pickup artist stuff. Sure, yeah. I don't know. that. I would never, like, that would not include, I would never be like, oh, they've got, like, the, I would never notice. Yeah, so that's the kind of thing where I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. This is some yeah, high-level not... negging. He's negging our entire <laughs> female audience of, like, seven or whatever. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> like oh cute ring what'd you get that in a box of cracker jacks anyway yeah no i i also have never like sought that out like i know i don't look at someone and like my eyes immediately start going for oh do they have a ring or not sure yeah i mean sometimes i notice incidentally but i've never sought it's that f- that's for no. guys who are like in shark mode and it, they're just like trying to <laughs> yeah. detect like the blood in the water you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And it, of course, it like I don't even feel like that would stop someone who's in that mode, you know. Sure. Like if you're, if yeah. you're like that, like on the prowl that you're like at a work conference on the hunt for sliz, then you probably are not going to get stopped by like sure. a ring, you know. Yeah. It, yeah, but it might give the woman more confidence to be like, uh, I'm married, oh, and true. just show the ring, true. you know. Like then you yeah, don't have true. to like, yeah, you know, conversation over kind of a thing. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely very true. You can see how often I've been in these situations. <laughs> yeah, it's such a problem. Men are always <laughs> hitting on me. Yeah, very big problem. I don't know. I think a lot of the the stuff that you were mentioning, Donald, the like uh, shorthand is not the right term, but the like the type of guy who or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I I can totally see the utility of that to an extent, but the degree to which people seem to rely on it now yeah makes me think that people have no like actual uh no gauge of like the quality of a person sure. so they rely purely on signifiers instead of like i have a good gut feeling about like this person's intentions sure you know like there, yeah. there is nothing like you just there's no trusting you just don't have the ability to trust anything so then you have to rely on a bookshelf instead yeah. of like who they are as a person sure. I don't I, know, it's kind of empty and sad I, I also i mean we should be clear that when we're talking about people online and stuff 99 percent of the time this is probably all just happening in their heads like it's probably yes there's not even a guy involved it's just like <laughs> yeah. they like yeah. see a book and they like on a shelf and they're like don't <laughs> they start you know, getting mad yeah, yeah. So, oh ooh, i hate that kind of guy ooh. yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, I want to Which return to the, yeah, the question real quick. Um, the thing about lots of added responsibilities. I kind of get what he's saying. Um, not about a girlfriend or whatever in particular, but just about like anything at all. Sure. There's there's some <laughs> yeah. part of me that's just like n- nothing is actually worth any kind of effort. So yeah, uh, I'm so glad to hear this. <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's I, a, it's yeah. some part of my brain. I I you know it, I uh, I argue with this part of my brain, but sure. it, it it's a compelling voice. I'll say that. Sure. Jeez, I, Louise. I uh I I like started looking more at like pet pictures kind of thing. Like I get you know send them to friends <laughs> and stuff like that. 
and uh, <laughs> I see dogs, and they make me almost like tear up. I'm like, these dogs are so cute, or whatever kind of. Thing. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, um, but I think to myself, I'm like, I think of like getting a dog, and then I just like uh, I start to like go, oh no, I would like forget the dog for days at a time or something like that. <laughs> then, I would not, I would not be good on like responsible and stuff like that. I don't know. So uh, I would um, hate walking it like the third time, like. Yeah, Jesus. you know what I mean. Like by the second day, I'd be like, I hate walking this stupid thing. Like I would just be <laughs> looking at the trash cans, like, oh, what? Hmm, what if I forgot this dog or something? You know? Yeah, yeah. Don't. No. I'm just kidding. I know you are, and I'm telling you, don't make jokes like that. I don't like it. I love dogs. I don't want to hear anything like that. White wall middle right? Okay. <laughs> In uh, in the movie Casino, the Sharon Stone ties her daughter to the bed so that she can go out clubbing, kind of thing. That's like <laughs> okay. one of the things in it. And uh, you know, it just that's it's just that that's the kind of parenting idea I can kind of go. Yeah, I get that. I understand. <laughs> I don't know. You can't like. Uh, I wouldn't know what to do, so I'd just be like, "There you go. Gotta go." I guess. <laughs> no, I, no, I guess I, I have. I take that for granted with with dog ownership i already just know what to do i've i grew up with dogs so i already have like i would just do everything that i needed to do even if i was like tired because i just i I would go on autopilot yeah no i know i i I don't feel like that about kids i don't know how to raise a kid but i do know how to raise a dog (laughs) yeah it's basically the same i imagine Uh roughly similar i should roughly sorry (laughs) i should also be clear that like this is all just humor. I'm actually really good at relationships. And uh, <laughs> if any it's woman's true. listening, that's like, that guy's great, whatever. Yeah. Like, don't, don't, just, just forget the last few minutes kind of thing. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's get to the next question here. What percentage of Lobie shit posters would be willing to push a button that kills a random person? They don't know who, and no one will ever know, in exchange for Felix from Chapo levels of clout. <laughs> hmm. What percentage? Uh, it's some percentage. Funny. It's a non-zero percentage. <laughs> it's way more than non-zero. <laughs> it's less than 50. It's between, hmm. one, like, non-zero and 50. <laughs> non-zero and 50. Lobies, sorry, what was the like? Was it of of the general population or just Lobie like... shit posters? Percentage of oh, Lobie okay. shit posters pushing a button that kills a random person. I feel like a lot of people would do that even without the clout being the carrot on the stick. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I I guess if they're actual posters. I'm going to say it's very high. If they were just like lurkers, I got to give it up for the lurkers. I can't, you know, we got to, you got to say that they're like, they're, I, I feel like they're the angels are kind of like watching us. Kind of like that. You got to, <laughs> you got to boost them. So, but if they're actual posters and just lobies and uh, trying to make their way in the world and stuff, I feel like it's a hundred percent maybe or so. Uh, uh, <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty high. It could be. I, I feel like it. <laughs> I, I'm sort of a lobby. If I was presented with this, I would push it and be like, I don't think that worked. Is this working? And then just keep pushing it, like thinking like, I don't know, is this broken, guys? Is this working? And I would end up killing like 100 people by accident. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. You, to me, uh, you don't count as a lobby. You're more like, a, at the very least, like a super lobby or something like that kind of thing. A mid uh, No, people know who you are and stuff and like... Uh, um. My name's on the street, so yeah. Well, there's there's a lot of people toiling in, you know, the shadows online, so. That's true. You're above that, but like, uh, I don't know, so. I'm of that? I'm I'm one of the shadow toilers? No, 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 you're above that, I said. (laughs) Oh, oh, okay. You said I'm of that. (laughs) No, no, no. I could get into (laughs) shadow toiling. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, when is Donald making his debut as a VTuber? <laughs> what is that? Uh, what is VTube? Is that something? Oh man, does that, that not mean YouTube? Awesome. No, it doesn't. What is VTube, this? VTubers are. 
How do I explain this? Um, it is a, it's an originally Japanese phenomenon, oh as far as I know, at least originally popular in Japan. Uh-oh. And it started coming over here where um, uh, girls, usually um, girls who were trying to be idols and have um, some sort of training in voice acting or uh, singing and dancing and something like that, where they have little motion capture stuff on and they sit in front of a... They they basically like stream, except what you're seeing is uh, like a cute anime avatar animated girl that is doing this. Like they're sitting there wearing the motion capture stuff and but you're not seeing them you're not seeing the human you're seeing the avatar that they've chosen for themselves or their yeah i i just googled it and looked at the images it's all anime bullshit it it, it looks like <laughs> it <laughs> just turns you into a you know anime cartoon character on the stream yeah and they're like they're like streamers basically except with an avatar that's basically it but um I, they are this the the subculture around them is considered very lowly, but I I like I like VTubers. <laughs> sure, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I don't know, maybe it's well. You would be great. Mm-hmm. I would I would watch you so much. Tom. Should I use like a strange so voice or something? Yeah, like a... you don't have to. No, I mean they the they do, but they're like yeah. You it's not it's not uh it's not part of the job description necessarily Hmm. they they're they're all doing that because they already were doing that like a lot of them are like voice actors and sure and performers and stuff but i i don't think that would be expected of you you would just need to choose a cool avatar to represent you and then you know just do little like people would be like hey you should play this game and we want to watch you play this game and then you would play that game and offer your cool commentary on it uh i was watching like uh one of the episode one uh, streams, whatever on Twitch, Twitch is so confusing to me. I don't know. It's just like it's like <laughs> there's all different like emojis and like just different like gifts and I don't know, just like lots of things happening on the screen at the time, all the time. They're and, not called emojis. Well, whatever. That is very confusing. I don't know, and uh, I don't know how people do it. I don't know. It's a. Uh, it, it was fun what I watched, but like uh, you know what I mean. Like it's just a. Uh, it, it it that feels like I'm watching like a Japanese TV show from like yeah, I know what like you already. mean yeah yeah um, so but yeah so anyways yeah okay well I guess that'll wrap it up for today a little Doom yeah. chat with tabs yeah thanks for coming on thank you for having me all right well if you guys like this episode and you'd like a second episode of you can't win every week you can get that by subscribing to our patreon we well, you get that episode as well as access to our discord where you can chat with us in our lovely community if you want to submit anonymous questions for us to answer at the end of the episodes you can do that by going to our twitter account at you can't win pod and you'll find a link to the curious cat pin there thanks for listening and we'll catch you next week thanks guys